proportion, which would be the bone cells. So what is the clinical significance of this? Now remember, I've got my collagen, <clears throat> which is like my rebar. My hydroxy appetite, which is also known as red. calcium phosphate. Now, why would this structure be clinically significant? Mm -hmm. Sort of. We're going to learn. Well, the bone, the bone has to be able to do that. But now remember, bone is going to affect all other systems. Okay? You're going, for example, Calcium phosphate, okay? Calcium is going to be the reason, one of the reasons muscle contracts. Now when I say muscle, we have three types. What's the three types of muscle? Skeletal, cardiac, skeletal. Okay, smooth, viscera, cardiac for a reason. Now, how could this be clinically significant in relationship to muscle? Structure. And in which part do I need? You mean the calcium? The calcium. The body, the level of calcium in the blood is going to be regulated so tightly, okay? Meaning, if the body has too much, is it going to build up bone or break it down? Build it up. It is going to store it. If the body doesn't have enough, it'll do what? Break it down. Now, it's not going to just affect muscle, which I've already mentioned we've got three kinds. That's pretty much the whole body. It's going to affect nerves. Calcium is needed for nerves to function. Meaning, brain, spinal cord, spinal nerves, everything. It's going to affect the kidneys. It will affect the digestive system. There is not a system this will not affect. So, trying to point out its importance, <laughs> um, I, I don't think I give it justice because it is so important, the system. Now, any questions? Because we're going to look at this structure and how it forms and so forth. Um, any questions about any of the structure to it? Okay, so the connective tissue on the inside compared to the outside, is it like softer on the inside or like? No, it'll be very similar on each side. You, you might think that because this is the portion to the, the blood supply and everything, the difference is it's only having to cover the spicules, those trabeculae, meaning the, where that spongy bone is going to look like a sponge, okay? It's only having to cover that one little area. Here, this outer portion is having to cover the whole thing. 
So it does have to create like little fibers and everything to hold it in place. Okay, so everybody's got the idea of the bone. All right, so now let's take a peek at what we just mentioned. As, as I've mentioned, babies. Babies are mostly cartilage, okay? And then they have to grow, and as they grow, bone begins to replace that cartilage. So when we say woven, woven is in relationship to the way the collagen looks. One direction, one direction, okay? So that occurs during fetal development, and then if the bone needs to repair from a fracture, because <clears throat> once the bone gets to this point right here, that structure's pretty set, okay? when it gets to what we see as the mature bone, okay? The structure is pretty much the direction it's gonna be. When bone, basically, if the bone breaks down, if it builds up, um, as we grow and so forth, um, as it responds to stressors, the term that we use for that is bone remodels all right and it's going to do that your entire life as you are going through everyday life let's say you start working out you stop working out you gain weight you lose weight whatever the case might be bone responds to that and then the mature bone like i keep pointing out it's lamellar. It's in these circles, okay? Sheets, all right? So we get that um, collagen, one direction and one layer, different direction and another layer, and that is because it gives us strength. If our bodies, the bone, were to be missing spongy bone, it would be so heavy, we would not be able to move. If, we were, if all of these bones were compact all the way through, you, you wouldn't have that ability to move, okay? But, but, but here's the thing. When we think of spongy, when we think of a sponge, what comes to mind? Something that might absorb light, squishy, spongy this time refers only to the look of it. Believe it or not, spongy bone is not squishy or basically not no, no strength being present, okay? It's not. The spongy bone, believe it or not, the way that it's made gives compact bone strength and makes it light enough that we're able to move around. So spongy bone is made up of all of these little squiggly pieces that I tried to point out, okay? And the, all the, those squiggles are termed trabeculae. You may also see them as spicules, 
okay? And that is what's making up the spongy bone. The spaces allow for filling up with bone marrow. They're covered because they are to the inside portion. Inside means endo, okay? So their connective tissue is endosteum, okay? This one to the outside. Do you remember what that one was? Periosteum, okay? So to the inside, it's endosteum, endo, okay? And it's oriented along what is termed a stress line. All right, what does that mean? Hmm. In our long bones, okay? Can everybody kind of see where I'm trying to represent this one? Okay? Even though it's not exactly formed right, but hey, it's plastic. Okay, now, this would be my humerus, okay, and what they would consider to be a stress line would be up here. Do you happen to know why? Do, do what? Well, we've got a lot, definitely, because it's a ball and socket joint, okay, but if we were to fall, the way that we try to brace ourselves is this way. And when we do that, or if we fall, you know, we try to brace this way, or this way, or this way, okay? The stress would concentrate right there, okay? And so, we find that this spongy bone, it is more prevalent in an area of stress than through the shaft. Do you see the difference between here? And it's because spongy bone gives strength. Do you know anyone who has osteoporosis? Which is what? Her bones are like brittle. They're like, they're, they, she, has, she breaks a lot of bones. She breaks a lot of bones. And they have a lot of stuff they do now for people. And osteoporosis at one time used to be associated with females mostly, okay? But it happens in men also, okay? And here's what breaks down in osteoporosis. This portion. So this portion of the spongy bone, which would be along a line of stress, okay? Spongy bone is breaking down and it leads to more fractures. One of the areas that it can definitely affect are the vertebrae of the back. And they tend to have like fractures that happen in the vertebrae. And it's a breakdown of the spongy bone. The compact bone, <clears throat> this is what I was trying to point out with these, okay? I was trying to point out, do you guys remember me mentioning the Haversian Canal, okay? So that is that canal running down in an osteon. It's through the middle of an osteon. And remember, osteon, 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 okay? Lamella, the layers. Whether we're talking about the layers of an osteon, the layers in between the osteon, or the layers around it as a whole, okay? Then, I tried to point out the blood vessels, where I was showing, we've got those blood vessels running um, vertically, but then also horizontally. When we look at the ones that will run perpendicular, okay, the ones that are horizontal.